Happy 4th of July. This is Chief. Uh, yeah, this is the 5th, I know. Just wanted to wish everybody a good 4th of July. Meant to do this yesterday, but noise got too loud outside. Uh, today's going to be a little bit of show and tell, and I want to wrap up basic training. And I had to dig through what I call my war chest to find my uh, platoon picture. And I owe S Drill Sergeant Gordon some push-ups because I've been calling him Drill Sergeant Johnson. Uh, a little bit here on show and tell. Yeah, big picture. I couldn't find the original from when this for this one that was blown up. This was blown up for my uh, retirement ceremony, but that's my first military picture. Uh, I think they took it the same day they took the platoon picture, which I'm about ready to show. They took us to a room. They had the flag the backdrop of the blue field and threw a uh, dummy M16 in our hands and you know, next, 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 took our picture real quick, and then, of course, I got a bunch of prints and sent them around. Um, <clears throat> Want to go through my platoon picture here. Uh, I'm going to tell a few stories. Uh, the individual down here that's actually holding our Delta IV flag is uh, Canales, and he came from El Salvador, and he really wanted to be a U.S. Army soldier. He immigrated the legal way. He joined the military, but he was one of the few people. He got medically discharged. He uh, messed up his back, and I don't know if he slipped a disc or something, but they basically medically discharged him. Uh, the person to his... And here I am holding it the same way. person to his left is my squad leader, Hogeen. Hogeen and I, as I think I said already, were the only ones that didn't get replaced because every time the... Uh, squad leaders did get yelled at. He was always on KP, so I was filling in for him. So they didn't, they, I guess they forgot to fire him every time because every time they yelled at the uh, squad leaders, they all got fired except for me and Hogeen. And he was a pretty quiet guy. And every time, like, I, the very next day, it's like, man, you should have been here. We got yelled at. And he'd just, he'd just smile at me. And the person above him is, uh, hi, Scott. Scotty Acock, that's my uh, bunk buddy. Uh, young, he was a younger kid. He went into aviation to become a mechanic. Over here is guy, one of the few people actually smiling in this photo. Photo. That is Durden. His last name is Durden. He was he was a comic. He he was the one that kept us going. I mean, it's not that he went out of his way to make jokes, but he always had a smile on his face and could sit there. In case you haven't guessed, make sure I look at it correctly. Oops, I've already lost me. Nope, there I am. Exact middle. Let's see, did I lose me again? There I am. There's that young soldier. <clears throat> Oldest member of the platoon. Uh, in the back row here, we got a guy named... Let me pull up my list, make sure I got it. That's Connor. Connor was a reservist. Uh, his job in the reserves was uh, canvas, and he told me how he made canvas tents, and then, of course, on the side, since he lived in the New, Link New England area, he made uh, sails for sailing ships, and he said it was quite interesting how he lined stuff up and got it right. He was also our most heaviest soldier in the platoon, and, of course, the first week we were there is when they measured us for Class A's. And we didn't see those again until almost a week before graduation. So they got delivered. Drill sergeants said, everybody get in your Class A's. We all got in our Class A's. Connor lost 40 pounds. His Class A's hung on him like a sack. The drill sergeants were upset. They're like, nope, there's no way we can fix this before graduation. Uh, we started with 49. I've got all their names here. I underlined uh, six names. Uh, they all got phased back or, or discharged. I think five of them got uh, phased back to a different platoon. I know one for sure. And Canales was a medical discharge. I don't think we had any other medical discharge. And then I got four additional names that aren't on here. I think those are the four people that we picked up just before we graduated. So we graduated. We finally got hot water. I don't know if I mentioned this. We went through the whole cycle, October to December, at Fort Dix. No hot water whatsoever in our barracks. Uh, about a, the 
Thursday or Friday before we actually graduated, the following Wednesday I think it was, I can't remember for sure, we had a drill sergeant finally take a shower in our barracks building. We were in bed. We all heard this yelling, hooping and hollering. The very next day, all the drill sergeants started yelling at us. They're like, why didn't you guys tell us you didn't have hot water? We kept telling them we don't have hot water, and they just wouldn't listen to it. They just called us a bunch of pansies. Uh, what it was is they went down into the basement, which was had a dirt floor. This wasn't a true basement. It was just a basement just to hold the boilers. They found out that the boiler pilot light had not been turned on, so that is why we did not have hot water throughout the whole cycle except the last weekend. The last weekend was also when they said, you guys are on your own. There were so many fights, it was unreal. There were several inside my platoon because there was a lot of rivalry. We had guys from all over. We had a Eskimo. We had uh, East Coast, West Coast. We had lumberjacks. We had guys that worked on ships. We had, like I said, two-thirds of my company was reserved, so we pulled them from everywhere. Uh, any other stories that I can think of? Um, Oh, Canales, before he got medically discharged, <laughs> we were uh, getting ready for one of our long hikes. We had on all our equipment, backpack, M16 and everything. So there we were standing at Port Arms, uh, Drill Sergeant Gordon <laughs> was uh, inspecting my squad. And Canales was right next to me on my left side. And Canales had this bulge in his upper pocket, round. Drill Sergeant walked up and down the line. He checked our backsides first, I think. Then he came around to our front. So he got to Canales before he got to me. And he goes, Recruit, why do you have a bulge in your pocket? And Canales, with a little bit of a smile on his face, I have yogurt in my pocket, Drill Sergeant. <sighs> drill Sergeant wanted to swing, but he knew he couldn't. He looked at Canales, he says, well, take care of that soldier before I do punch it flat into your chest. A uh, couple of us kind of chuckled. We got that look like, what are you doing laughing? And, uh, yeah. Uh, we graduated, like I said, as a bunch of skinheads because the company commander basically told uh, all the drill sergeants, I don't want to see any skinheads, and Gordon took it upon himself. Well, no company commander is going to tell me how my platoon is going to graduate, so we all became skinheads for graduation. We were highly upset. There's only two drill sergeants missing here. We got Rat uh, Drill Sergeant Ratliff. He was our main drill sergeant. Uh, we had another male and a we eventually got a female, I think I talked about her, but she was she was nothing. She came in like about three weeks before we graduated and she didn't really yell, she didn't really do much. Uh, I don't know what else to talk about graduation. We graduated, it was a cold day, it was a windy day. Graduation was short and sweet. It was like, um, it was a sunny day we were like the only company that graduated that day. Uh, the speakers hardly spoke uh, for very long because as I found out throughout my military career, we started timing the speakers. You generally have about two or three, depending on the ceremony. And it was short and sweet. We were back to the barracks before noon. Uh, you packed your bags. If you had a flight that day, you flew out that day. If not, you flew whenever you did. Uh, uh, about two-thirds of my company was going, to, was going to return back to Fort Dix for their AIT, their Advanced Individual Training. Uh, because of the nature of them being reservists and a lot, of the, a lot of the things that they did were being taught at Fort Dix at that time. I will probably speed through my um, first uh, AIT because for reasons, and I, I found when I was digging through my war chest, I found some other stuff for show and tell, so whenever we get to those periods of my career, I'll have more stuff to show. 
I also found some stuff that's like, why did I keep this? So happy 4th of July again. This is Chief. See you hopefully next week. If I stay on schedule, I'll start talking about going to my first AIT where I become a, try to become a 0-5 tail, which is a diddy bomb. Morse code interceptor. Chief out.